Welcome back. I'm NBC 10's Rosemary Connors. Reducing robocalls. Lawmakers in Washington have introduced bills to try to stop the unsolicited calls. Still, the scammers are constantly reinventing themselves, coming up with new ways to steal your money. According to the data company Transaction Network Services, Americans receive 200 million unwanted calls every day. The research shows that scammers are most likely to launch calls from smaller regional carriers. One in 1,700 mobile numbers are hijacked by robocallers every month. That's double last year's rate. Joining me now to help make sense of all of this is Jim Terrell. He is the Senior Director of Product Marketing at Transaction Network Services. That's where we got those numbers from just a moment ago. Jim, thanks for being with us. Yeah, thanks for having me on, Rosemary. All right. So first, we got to talk about what's happening at the federal level in terms of trying to stop these robocallers. I mean, I get them. I'm sure you get them. Yep. Everybody gets them. So yeah. what's going on in Washington? So in Washington, there's legislation. It's called the Pallone Thune Trace Act. Mm -hmm. And there's three things that 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 act will actually uh, really do. Uh, the first is it'll set up a call authentication framework, which is kind of a digital footprint. It acts as a notary to say, yes, I know where this call is coming from, and I can validate that it is who they say they are. You know, similar to, you know, what a notary does. A notary, mm -hmm. you know, will, will say, yes, that's who you are. But they won't look at what the contents of what you're signing. Uh, so that's one thing that'll that'll help. Which it which is a big help because if you think about it, a lot of the way scammers get to us is they make numbers that look like numbers, call, you know, maybe of people who are already in your contact list or uh, people in your region. So you might think it's a local business giving you a call. So if we do have this uh, sort of data out there from the government that can say, look, this this is this is exactly who this call is, then that's certainly helpful. Yeah, it definitely it, it definitely is. So there are legitimate reasons to change the calling number. So, mm -hmm. for example, a doctor may be calling you off hours from the hospital or uh, and doesn't want to display what his personal cell phone number is. So he'll use the hospital number, or he'll use the doctor's office number. Unfortunately, the bad actors, as you pointed out, use that same technology to make it look like I'm getting a call from the Social Security Administration right. or uh, Apple, for example, mm -hmm. that, uh, you know, where they'll try to use that and then, uh, you know, defraud you of, 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 of money. All right, so what else are, are in these bills in, uh, in Washington right now that could, that could put a stop to this? Yeah, so it allows the FCCs to go after scammers a lot quicker mm -hmm. uh, and increases the fines. So uh, prior uh, to this bill, uh, the FCC had to uh, issue a citation, and, and then they could then start uh, going after and, and, and start charging you know, per call. I'm hearing a lot of red tape is what it sounds like yeah, previously. It's, it, it, it is a lot of red tape. And then, and then the third thing is that, that it'll form an interagency working group that will look to improve the deterrence uh, and potentially criminal prosecution. So the problem with the FCC offering or I I issuing citations is that they've issued maybe about $200 million over the last couple of years, and they've collected on about $7,000. So if you make it a criminal prosecution similar to wire fraud, mm -hmm. uh, they're hoping that that will then you know, increase the, the deterrence. You know, if you're going to go to jail, you're probably less likely to, you know, perpetuate a scam. Sure. We like to think of ourselves as uh, as becoming more sophisticated or, or right. hip to the game of these scammers. Um, but what are scammers doing now that's changing that we may not be aware of? And what can people do to try to avoid it, try to stop it, and right. make sure they're not giving away their personal information? Right. So, you know, great question. What they're tending to do is using local numbers to, to get you to pick up so that you're so you think that, it, hey, it may be a call from a hospital or mm -hmm. maybe a call from my neighbor, et cetera. The other thing that they're doing is, is that they're spoofing or, you know, you know pushing out legitimate toll-free numbers. So, for example, uh, the 800 Apple number uh, being used quite a bit. Mm -hmm. and, and one of the scams there is, is that they say that there's something wrong with your iCloud account that you've been breached, and then they'll get your personal information and then, uh, you know, try to, uh, you know, defraud you of, of, of money. So that's... That's a that's a bad thing. So so what can cost, so what can consumers do? Uh, you know, I would say, you know, educate yourself on what some of the latest robocall scams are. You can come, you can go to our website tnsi.com, search on uh, robocall scam of the month, and when we do post, you know, what the latest uh, scams are that mm -hmm. we're seeing. Uh, the second thing I would say is is work with your carrier. They have apps uh, that are available. Uh, we did a recent survey where. 
70% uh, of the subscribers didn't realize that the carriers already had an app uh, available, and a lot of these are now... That could help filter out some of these calls. Filter out some of the calls and or at least warn you uh, that, that it's a bad actor calling you saying... We don't know who this is. Right, yeah, it's a potential scam or potential fraud, for example. Uh, and then, you know, I would say the, you know, probably the, the, the third thing is not to, uh, you know, not to answer calls from numbers that you, you don't recognize. The tried, and, tr the tried right. and true advice. Right. And so, you know, if it's, a legitimate, if it's a legitimate enterprise trying to get a hold of you, most likely they're going to leave a message. Uh, and then kind of the fourth thing is, is don't call back numbers that you don't recognize. There's a, there's a, a scam called uh, One Ring Scam where they'll call you uh, and ring once. And, and they'll do this kind of in the middle of the night, hoping that you then the next morning. Who is this? Let me call them back. Let me call them I back. See. And guess what? You're calling the Caribbean and, 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 and incurring charges, long distance charges or international charges. So, again, you know, some of it's kind of common sense. But, but you know, if, if you do think that you've been uh, defrauded, you know, certainly, you know, reach out to the, the local law enforcement authorities. Uh, and then, I, you know, I would say, you know, just just kind of be just kind of be diligent. Of course, and uh, and I and this is my own advice. If somebody is trying to reach you, they will get in touch with you, whether it's right. text, voicemail, email, they'll find you. All right, Jim Terrell, of course, with Transaction Network Services. Thanks for coming in and sharing your expertise. Really appreciate it. All right, thank you, Rosemary.